Hello everyone. In OpenTTD, should you give your vehicles orders? The answer is probably yes, but for some networks, the answer is no. This video is an introduction to self-regulating networks. Self-regulating networks, or SRNW, are an advanced type of network where, essentially, vehicles don't have enough orders, so they don't know where they're going. Instead, pathfinding traps and logic devices are used to guide the trains around. So that might not make much sense, probably sounds a bit crazy, so let's look at some examples. So the simplest possible self-regulating network isn't for trains, but it's something you can do with buses. So if I add a few random bus stops here, and buy a bunch of buses, I don't actually need to give the buses any orders. What they'll do is just randomly move around the city. So let's speed this up a little bit. And you can see that when they happen to run into a bus stop, they will pick up uh, passengers there. And then they'll randomly find another bus stop and drop them off. Now, if you wanted to improve this a little bit, you could add one-way roads. There we go. Now we can see that the buses will sort of stay on this one ring of roads, so they won't keep wandering off. So this is kind of efficient, not really that useful unless you're trying to grow a city. So next, let's start looking at how we can apply this to trains. So here's our situation. I set up a simple passenger network between these cities of Oakland and Richmond, and currently the trains just full load at each end and they skip Berkeley. But what I want to do is I want the trains coming from Oakland, going towards Richmond, to stop in Berkeley only if there isn't another train stop there. So trains have conditional orders, which you might think would work in this situation, but you can only uh, have conditions on things like how full the train is, and they don't know about other trains on the network. So what we're going to do is build a very small local self-regulating subnetwork just for this sort of split here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add two waypoints, one over here and one over here, and this will just be the entrance and exit to the self-regulating network. So I'll call them Berkeley In and Berkeley Out. And now I want to make sure those trains always hit those two waypoints. Now, it's kind of obvious that they'll hit them in this situation, but in a more complicated network, that could be more important. So even though we have that, the trains still avoid Berkeley Woods. So this is because of the way the Pathfinder works. Stations give a Pathfinder penalty, so trains will prefer to go on tracks without stations rather than tracks that do have stations. But we can also control the Pathfinder penalty in other ways. So for example, trains do not like going through path signals backwards. So if I put a bunch of backwards two-way path signals over here, the trains will prefer to go towards Berkeley Woods. All right, so now as this train comes through, we can see it now chooses to go towards Berkeley Woods, but it didn't stop there. So actually, if we look at the orders, we can see that all these orders are marked as non-stop. So that means if the train hits a random station, it won't stop there. And that's generally a good thing because we don't want our lost trains to start trying to pick up cargo at random stations or drop off cargo at random stations. But in this situation, we actually do want it to stop if it hits Berkeley Woods. So what we can do is change the uh, order that heads towards Berkeley out to be normal, to not have non-stop. So now when trains come, they will actually stop at Berkeley Woods. Here comes the train now. Let's see if that order updated fast enough. Yes, it did, and it'll stop there, it'll unload its cargo, and it'll try to un uh, it'll try to load any passengers that happen to be there. But this is the first train, so there won't be any passengers yet. So this sort of works, but we have a problem. If we want the train to full load at Berkeley Woods, there's no way to tell it to full load because we don't actually have an order for that. So we'll find a fix for that in a second. But let's pretend for now that the train does know how to full load, so I'll just stop it here. When another train comes, if I speed it up a bit, we can see that it actually chooses to go to the right again, because it sees all these penalties here. Still wants to go to the right, so we 
don't have the the uh, condition where the train will bypass the station if there's already a train loading. So let's fix that. That's actually really simple to fix, uh, but you do need to have yapif dot first dot rail underscore first read underscore two way underscore eol on. So this is a setting you have to set it from the console. So you have to hit the tilde in the top left of your keyboard, type that in. And what this does is it makes sure that, well, it makes it such that if a train sees a two-way block signal that is red, let's, uh, let me stop this train. We can use it as an example. If it sees a two-way block signal that is red, so let's remove these signals. Now it's red. The Pathfinder will look at that route as a dead end. So this train will now choose to go left, even though there's a lot of penalties here. This just looks like a dead end. So that's the worst possible option. So now it'll bypass the station as it should. And we'll also need to get this signal out of the way. So let's get these trains out. Ooh, get these trains out of the way. So now trains will properly bypass the station. So next let's figure out how to get them to full load properly. This is the point where things start to get a little bit crazy. So there are a lot of different ways to make full load work, but the easiest way is with a dummy train. So the idea with that is we can make a copy of one of these trains or get a train that has the same number of passengers. And once that train gets a full load, we'll know that we have enough passengers at the station. So once that happens, we can transfer all the passengers from the dummy train onto the, uh, the normal train and it'll have a full load. But that's actually a little bit tricky to do in practice. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So I'll explain this after I build it mainly. So we're gonna add a path based signal before the entrance to the station and add an extra tile long station next to the normal station for the dummy train. It's gonna go and cross over the normal line. And then on the back ends, we'll have a waypoint. And that's all we need. So now let me clone one of these trains, get rid of the orders. So this dummy train, what we want it to do is we'll first have it get a full load of cargo at our station. Uh, we'll do near end. So once we get a full load, then we go to the exact same station to the middle this time and we'll transfer it. And then finally we'll go to the waypoint and that's just to make sure the train turns around and that's all we need for the dummy train. So there it is. Uh, and we need to, yes, full load. Okay, so that was weird. I'm not sure why I went back and forth for a second, but now it is gathering a load of cargo. Meanwhile, a train is approaching and we can see it actually is waiting here for the dummy train. So let me, um, let me get some color tracks so we can see these path reservations more easily. So you can see we have the path based signal here and this train is waiting because it can't reserve the path through the station. And that's because the dummy train is reserving the path all the way through. Now, once that train gets a full load, so let's speed things up. You can see meanwhile, trains on the main line are passing by. So once the dummy train reaches full load, it'll move forwards to the middle of the platform and transfer all of its cargo back to the station. So now we know that there's a full load of cargo waiting. So at that point, the train will turn around to hit the waypoint and that will unreserve these tracks here and that'll let the real train through. So at this point, the real train is unloading its cargo and then it'll be able to full load all of these waiting passengers. And meanwhile, another train has joined the, uh, the waiting bay over there and it'll have to wait for a full load again, as we see. So once the first train leaves, the dummy train will move back to its loading position and the cycle will repeat. It'll wait for a full load, it'll transfer, and the next train will be let through. So here we only have a very simple self-regulating network and it's only a tiny sub-network with two different choices. But we have the building blocks we need. So what we could do is duplicate this station across an entire map and build a whole network around this concept where trains 
don't really know where they're going and the network sort of just pushes them in the right direction or pathfinding traps pull them in the right direction. You could build a whole network around that and that's something that OpenTTD Coop has done. So next let's take a look at some of those maps. All right, so here is public server game number 275, which was played in March of 2014. So this is a passenger self-regulating network, and we have a world population of almost a million. And the plan for this map was to essentially have two sides. We have the uh, bottom, I guess, and the top side. And if we uh, take a look at some of these mainline trains, actually. Let's see how they look. We can see that they only have two real orders. These implicit orders just get created and they don't actually mean anything. Um, but yeah, they only have two orders. Go to the waypoint northbound and then go to the waypoint southbound. So the idea is that trains will hit up a city, pick up passengers from one side of the map, and then they'll go to the other side of the map and they'll just alternate back and forth between these two sides. So let's take a closer look here at Slug York. If we zoom in, we can see that all the stations are actually the same design that we came up with earlier. So we have these dummy trains, these are higher capacity trains, that serve and make sure that these uh, slug trains are able to get full loads. And then there are these waiting bays and tunnels to efficiently use space. And actually this is done, so the slug trains aren't actually the mainline trains, so they in turn transfer their passengers to even larger trains over here and these these giant trains in turn trigger the release of mainline trains so each of these big trains it looks like triggers the release of four mainline trains and those all get transferred so the passengers transfer first from the dummy so the slug from the slug to the really big dummy train over here and in turn that gets transferred to the main line. So it's a little bit convoluted. Um, you know, there's not really necessary to do all those steps, but that's just the way V453000 chose to do it. I'm sure he had his reasons. All right, so next let's take a look at Poofield, the Poofield uh, city setup made by Absolutis. Over here, we just have some local trains that transfer the cargo to this station and this is where we have a bunch of dummy trains at work so every other one of these platforms is a dummy train and they are arranged in a sort of strange way this is kind of crazy but they're arranged in a way so that once they all fill up they sort of cascade to let each other through and that lets all the trains through so at this point the last dummy train has just filled up and it's going to turn around lets the first real train through which in turn lets the next dummy train through and it sort of cascades all the way down across the station looks kind of nice but it's bad in that it creates waves of trains which is kind of inconvenient to deal with on the network but it is quite cool So finally, here is a design that I made. So coming from the top, we have the mainline trains and they go through this top transfer station. And on the bottom, we have the local trains, which are just picking up cargo. They have normal full load orders and then they transfer over here. So the way this is set up is such that once a train enters from the drop off side, it lets the corresponding train out. Uh, the corresponding mainline train out. So we can see once this guy fully unloads all his cargo, this corresponding train up here will be let through. You can see just like that, this train is let through. So the idea is that there should always be a full load waiting. However, due to a bug in my circuit, it turns out that sometimes more passengers are dropped off than are picked up. So we can see quite a few passengers have ended up stuck at this station, unfortunately. 
So those were some pretty crazy stations, and I don't really expect people to understand it just with those brief explanations. I really just wanted to show them to show the different possibilities there are with self-regulating networks. There is also one big limitation to know about. Self-regulating networks do not work with cargo dist at all. And that's because cargo dist gives cargos a destination, and when your trains don't have orders, they don't have a destination, so the game has no idea if a train should pick up cargo or not, so it just doesn't work at all. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video, so thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like, and I'll see you next time.